I'm Jesse. I'm going to be talking to you about authoring plugins. Uh, I've been working on PhoneGap since 2008, and this is actually my first time ever coming to a PhoneGap day. So, any other first time PhoneGap day people here? Lots of you. Right on. Great to see you. Great for me to be here too, finally. So, 2008, it's crazy how long it seems like now. Uh, we've come a long way since then with uh, becoming, uh, I was acquired and, and started working for Adobe and we changed the name and we did all that, but things are still rolling forward and it's been an awesome ride. I'm in the process of moving to San Francisco, so right now my world's a bit upside down, but it's great to be here. So who's used uh, Cordova plugins? Presumably all of you, because if you've ever built anything with, with PhoneGap or Cordova, somewhere under there you're using a plugin. Since uh, 3.0, that's the only way that you can actually get any device functionality. So there's a, a few different ways that you can install plugins. There's uh, via the registry, so every plugin will have an ID and you can do Cordova plugin add on the command line and whatever the ID is and that installs it. Uh, some of the lesser known ways that you can, you can actually install a plugin are from a, a local folder. So if you have a cloned repo on your machine, you can actually do it right from there. So you can specify, you know, add repo slash Cordova slash Cordova plugin device as the name of a folder or you can actually go directly to the GitHub URL. So that all works. Uh, as far as uninstalling plugins, you're always gonna have to use the ID of the plugin. So if you ever need to see what plugins are actually installed and their IDs, you just use Cordova plugin LS. So who has used Plugman? Is everyone familiar with the tool Plugman? Well, not very many of, you, many of you, but you've all actually kind of used it behind the scenes with uh, Cordova CLI. When Cordova plugin add is called, it's actually calling Plugman add your plugin for each device that you have in your project. So the syntax is different for Plugman. You don't really have to uh, spend a lot of time knowing this because you can actually get the same functionality with ju just Cordova plugin add and remove but it has some, uh, some nice tricks for you. Like in, in this case, in this sample, we're installing a plugin uh, by ID for a particular platform and we're doing it from right inside the platform folder. So this is a, an alternative workflow if you're actually developing a plugin and you wanna focus on Windows Phone 8 in this case, you could actually start developing right after doing that. So there's, there's a notion of core plugins, and what this really means is these are things that we used to call collectively PhoneGap, and these were the device functions that we exposed. Uh, these are now all on their own repos, and they're still maintained by Cordova contributors, and so we consider them to be core. So you're probably familiar with, with most of these. There's some others, and there's potentially some more to come. Uh, there's discussions about push notifications as a uh, a formal Cordova plugin, so expect some goodness there in the near future. So another thing that goes along with plugins is how do you find out what plugins are out there? So Cordova has a, a registry where we actually list plugins and you can see stats for how popular they are, uh, how many times they're installed, and links to your readme information on those plugins and the actual repos that they come from. There's also, I don't know if you can call it a, a plugin fan site, but we're not the only ones who've made you know, plugin registries. There's uh, this site, which is actually very good, called uh, plugreg.com, which lists plugins for Cordova. There's also the, uh, the buildphonegap.com list of plugins, and all the core plugins are uh, tested against a version. So you can, if you go there, you're, you know that you're getting a, a good core plugin. How many?
Yeah, I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit, uh, how you actually register. Uh, Plugins.cordova.io is actually tied very closely to Plugman, and it has a, uh, a publish method very similar to an NPM publish. So when you start uh, authoring a plugin, you're gonna actually have to define what your plugin, uh, what its ID is, uh, and what files it needs. So this is all done uh, through the plugin XML file. So it has information on the, the ID, uh, version number, author, repo, and a bunch of files. Uh, I can just show you an example of that. So looking at Cordova plugin device, if we go into the root here, we can see a plugin XML. And in here, we're gonna see the name, we're gonna see a, a version number, we're gonna see a, a description This is shown on uh, any site that wants to actually federate that data. You can define a license that you want for that plugin, uh, keywords for searchability within uh, plugins.cordova.io. You can specify a repository where you do your work. Uh, somewhere, if someone wants to, uh, to file issues against your, your plugin, not that there'd ever be an issue, uh, they can do it through your URL. And then you go on to define uh, the actual files that are going to be part of your plugin. So typically you'll define uh, a JS module, and this is where you're essentially defining the interface to your plugin for JavaScript. So this is what is actually going to be called uh, by the user in their, their JavaScript code to actually do something in your plugin. So. In this case, this would be device.id is the value that you would re retrieve from this plugin. And that would be defined in that, in that file. Then you have uh, a platform section, which is just a list of, of platform-specific code for each platform that you support. So if we look at iOS here, this plugin needs to actually modify uh, some configuration data. Actually, all of them define uh, this, this parameter at least. This is, uh, prevents uh, plugins that aren't properly installed from running. Uh, the actual Cordova app will prevent it from running if it's not registered in the, in the config.xml. So this is actually providing the mapping from the feature name to an actual concrete class inside uh, Xcode. And that concrete class would be defined in the header and the source file here. There, there's similar little nuances uh, for all the different platforms. And ultimately, when you're developing a, a plugin, you're actually have to, gonna have to get your hands dirty with the native code, because that's the entire point of the plugin. So similarly here, looking at the, the Windows Phone 8 uh, section, uh, it's defining you know, what it exposes, and then it needs to add a configuration to the actual uh, manifest file. So that's done here as well. And I, I think the best way to learn ab about these plugins is to actually go and, and pick apart a simple one, and, and device I find to be a perfect example for that because it, it doesn't do a, a ton of code. You're not gonna be bombarded by looking at all of this. It's just a, a simple method to get the ID of the device that you're running on. So if we look at Windows Phone, you can see it's got one class file in here, device.cs, and it exposes this public method version, which is called uh, by get device info. So when, when the plugin is launched, it's going to call get device info. It's going to ignore the, this argument here. It's going to actually retrieve that from the device, and then it's going to dispatch command result, which gets pushed back into JavaScript, and then it's available at runtime. So, 
Oh, go ahead. No, just the just the ones you want to support. So you can you can start with one and then add more later, or maybe someone fork, someone forks your project and adds support for another device and sends you a pull request in an ideal world. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So you don't actually have to memorize all of the details in that uh, plugin.xml file. There's a, a convenient helper inside of the Plugman tool. So first of all, to install Plugman, you would just npm install Plugman. Uh, it's a, a node module, so you can just node it up. Uh, so Plugman create will we'll take a, a name, a plugin ID, a plugin version, uh, and then an optional path and uh, some confusing variables, which I, do, I don't even understand. But the, the majority is just to get the, the boilerplate code there for you. So it'll, it'll set up the plugin.xml. It'll create the folder for you, which you should know, because if you create a plugin called Rapture, like I did, and then you find out that you shouldn't have done it inside a folder called Rapture, because Plugman create is going to create another folder inside there called Rapture. But it's Rapture because it's this is part of the God mode talk, if anyone gets that. And I'll get into more about what the plugin does in a little bit. So this right at the bottom there is an example of how you would actually uh, call create. And if a mistake that I made this morning when I was doing it was uh, if you just said minus minus version instead of minus minus plugin version, it's actually just going to say I'm plugman version blah blah blah. So it won't actually do what you want it to. So you have to be verbose. So I took you through a walkthrough uh, basically of, of the device plugin. So I'll, uh, I'll show you a little bit of Rapture. So this plugin supports iOS and Windows Phone 8 right now. Uh, I'm going to show you iOS because I don't think you want to watch me reboot. Uh, but it works exactly the same in Visual Studio in Windows. So essentially the idea was just to create a simple uh, plugin that takes a screenshot and saves it to the user's photo roll. So, First up, I went, actually I'll go to here, which is my, my Rapture plugin folder, which I created using Plugman Create. So it created uh, this plugin XML file for me, which defines you know, basic info about my plugin. Uh, you can see that it supports iOS and Windows Phone 8. Uh, in iOS, we need to be concerned with this feature name, Rapture, which is going to map to code in the, the source file, Rapture. So JavaScript is very simple. All it does is it has one method, which is capture screen, uh, and it'll call back to a success or an error handler. And then in the source folder in iOS, We've just got some, some basic uh, Objective-C code, if there's such a thing as basic Objective-C code, uh, that captures the screen and saves it to your device, to the photo roll. So then it will simply post that as a callback back to your code. So this is the, the way that you usually interact with a plugin from native. So you define a method which matches the name uh, of what you're calling from JavaScript. So we're calling uh, exec rapture capture screen, which maps to rapture capture screen, and it's passed this command object. So this command object will have any arguments that we wanted to pass in, but in this case, we're not actually 
getting any arguments. We just want to perform the action capture screen. So then it does its work. It uh, creates a plugin result with a simple message that says all is good, uh, and it calls back. And we look at that. Here we are in Xcode, and I've simply gone uh, Cordova plugin add with my folder, and it's added a few things uh, to the config. It's added this feature, right, which is used at runtime to make sure that we can actually call this plugin. And it's added this rapture.js file, which gets wrapped uh, with a Cordova define. And this is essentially the same code uh, that was in my repo. And then it's also added in plugins down here, uh, the rapture.m. So if I just run this, Are you running? It says it's running. Try it again. Oh, the tension. There it is. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you the JavaScript code that is actually calling it, but you can see all is good here. Uh, so in index.js, I've really just got, you know, I define a window.alert when I get the success callback. Losing, I, I can't even conceptualize losing, so. Uh, so rapture.capture screen is, is called here after device ready is, is fired, and then it's hitting our callback in winning. So also, as soon as, as, soon as you get to this point, you have you know, at least something functional, uh, and you can even you know, put less code in and just, just make your, your routing work and make sure that your code is going from JavaScript to Objective-C and back to JavaScript, then you can get to the point where you can actually do things. Like in here, you can actually put a breakpoint. And you can see that you're actually hitting your breakpoint. If you need to do anything you know, tricky on the native side, you can verify that, yeah, I'm being passed a, a command and doesn't give you much more information than that. But you can see that there was zero arguments so there is some more information there, and you can actually use the, the developer tools to, to dig into the native pieces. And I guess I should show you that, uh, indeed, if we go to photos here, we do actually have a screenshot that showed up. So I'll, uh, was that one clap? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll just delete it, and we can uh, we can run it again. Just to make sure I'm not cheating. And there it is. <laughs> that that felt like a pity clap. Okay. So debugging a code, uh, or debugging a plugin. The, the same goes for uh, Windows Phone and Windows 8. You can, you can dig into other stuff. Actually, if you're in Windows 8, you don't even need to have native code, because you can do uh, almost everything uh, through JavaScript. So documentation, of course, yeah, you should. Uh, tests, yeah. You should. Uh, if you look at any of the, the core plugins, you'll see that we've uh, sort of standardized around a docs folder which contains uh, index.readme, and that is actually uh, displayed on 
uh, plugins.cordova.io when you publish your plugin. Also tests, uh, we standardized on using uh, Jasmine 2.0 uh, to write your tests and there's a, a base plugin which actually defines uh, the way that you should write your tests. So if you want inspiration here, you should go and look at any of the core plugins and the way that they're doing it. Uh, I'm also looking at making this more automatable so that something like AppVayer can go and actually run tests uh, for your plugin on a, a platform and verify that uh, a pull request isn't going to break things. So that's, that's my presentation. Uh, hopefully there was a, a deep enough topic there for you to get started with that. Uh, I'd love to take some questions if anyone has questions. Not yet. It's coming soon, though. Yep. Pardon me? Post the, the example? Oh, yeah, OK. Uh, how do I get out of there? Uh, I'll push it to GitHub. It's uh, I'm Purple Cabbage on GitHub, and it's Purple Cabbage slash Slides. Uh, and the plugin is also in my repo. Uh, so there's that one. Uh, it's PhoneGap Day 14 plugins. And no one had taken the GitHub repo name of Rapture, so I'm good there. And if you want to add Android or Windows 8 or another platform, you're welcome to send a pull request. Any other questions? Uh, that's more of what all the stuff that Christoph was talking about. So that's more of the architecting your app and using a framework. Uh, so plugin is more about exposing the, the native side. If it is possible to actually do some of that, but it's going to the way that you approach that is going to depend on the device that you're on. So we we sort of stayed away from that. We played with you know doing native transitions between pages and things, but it's, it's tough to, to not become the operating system at that point and, and doing everything the way that they do it. But JavaScript and, and you know, modern CSS, uh, you can make things that look compelling enough that you don't really need to delve into the native ways of doing that. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead. There, there is a plugin for that, and it's Windows Phone 8 only. So it's not, it's not just for uh, cross-device. It's also just a way of, of exposing native functionality for a particular device. Yeah, in that, in that case, you would probably you know, check if the, the plugin is available uh, on iPhone. And if iPhone doesn't say tiles ported or whatever, uh, then you just wouldn't use it. Yep. Yep, uh, well, as long as we're able to keep rolling through Cordova versions, uh, plugins will be tested against uh, particular versions as they come out. 
and and you'll be able to get get it that way. Otherwise, if a, a brand new you know you install some beta uh, release of an OS, you can run the tests yourself and and verify that they are working. And I'll show I'll just show you briefly the the tests here. Tests themselves in a, a typical plugin are really just another plugin. So in this case, it's got a plugin.xml, and it simply defines a JS module, and inside that JS module is going to actually do the work of defining what tests should be run, what, what it should have, what it should do. So essentially, to, to test a plugin, you install the plugin, then you install the plugin tests, and then you just, uh, you can run your app, and you, it won't be in your app, it'll be in a separate, you know, test project, but you can just run it and you can add, you can add user interactive tests as well as, you know, auto tests that just run against your code. So we're gonna switch over to a demo. Are you ready? Are you ready to roll? So, thank you.